Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Well, maybe not very great. I'm waiting for parts. I'm in a little bit of a bind here. I can't finish to Jackson Kelly because I am just waiting for other parts to show up. And that kind of puts me in a little bit of a bind. So what I've got going on going on right now is that I'm stuck without a neck now because the neck that I had made was actually too short. It is a 22 fret instead of being a 24 fret. So I mounted the neck, and I always use, anytime I change the neck on a guitar, I will use the Stumac tool that has a block on one side and then a block on the other side with two pins on it, kind of like a little bit of a claw. And I'll measure from the nut to the 12th fret, from the 12th fret to the bridge. And that put me like right back here. So I would have to move the bridge in order to use that neck. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going to do that because I already have the holes. Everything is, is mounted over here. I'm not going to change anything. So I looked it up online, found a actual Jackson neck that's for the Kelly and also for the Flying V that Jackson makes and uh, ordered it. So it's coming from, I think, Arizona. And uh, I just have to wait for it. It's in very good shape. Even the headstock, it's got the black headstock with the Jackson logo in white. Um... It's white bounded around the sides of the neck. So I figured maybe I'll just leave that alone and not do the the pattern that I have here onto that neck as well. Just if it's in good shape to where, you know, if it's got a couple of scratches on it or something, I can just buff those out. If it's not nicked up or, or chipped or anything, the picture showed up online that uh, it was in like mint condition. So even the back of it looks really good. So I'll just end up mounting it to this body, and then when the pickup rings and everything else show up, I can put them together and everything, hopefully everything lines up the way it's supposed to be, I don't have to fiddle around with it too much at all. The other neck fits on here pretty nice, I mean it's not really snug, it's not really loose, but it mounts up perfect, there's no lip or edge over here, I mean it just came out really nice, just too short. So this guy is going off to the side for right now. So right now, I can't do anything with the Charvel body because that is drying right now. I put the last final coats of clear on it, and that came out really, really nice. I, I ended up uh, sanding down in a previous video the tape lines, giving the body a little bit of a bite for the clear to adhere to, and that came out really good. I can't ask for anything better, especially with the weather conditions that we're having right now. It's kind of on the cold side over here, looking at like a 67 degrees. I think the high was 70, and that didn't last long at all. So that's going to end up being on hold for a few days until I can end up uh, wet sand that, buff it out to a glass finish, and send it back uh, hopefully on Wednesday to the owner if everything goes well. So what am I going to do now? I mean, I'm kind of stuck with nothing here on the bench other than a towel and a few other things, but I still have another guitar that I can actually work on. Let me get my neck holder out and go get the other guitar. So here it is. This is the SGR by Schechter. In mint condition, I mean, I can't ask for anything used to be in such good shape. Even the frets are, like, other than being a little tarnished, they're not in bad shape at all. The neck itself, I like the way this thing looks. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but it's kind of darker at the top. There's a stripe going down over here, but it's like a gold right here coming off of this little emblem that they put in the as an inlay on the neck. I kind of like that a lot and it came out really good. Today I ended up getting a lot of the paints for this thing and uh, so I'm already in, you know, got my idea of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So here it is. So here's the paint that I'm going to be using for this body. We have a candy apple red, black diamond metallic, bright silver metallic. All right, and how this is gonna work out is I'm gonna end up sanding the body down, just doing a wet sanding. The body is already black, so I'm not gonna be using a lot of the black diamond to cover something up. It's gonna be a couple, maybe a couple of sprays of this, 
out of the can and let it kind of dry really good and then do a wet sanding again on top of that and then put my striping down once I get the flame that I like the look that I like on here I'm going to end up using the bright silver metallic to hit all the edges I'm not really worried about the center part of the flame and stuff that I'm probably going to end up sanding down because I want to remove that I'm not using an airbrush so I'm not going to have control over the tip uh, as far as how much paint or how much of a mist is coming out of the gun so I'm kind of just you know got to use it to what I got to use over here I've got the small air compressor and I've got the airbrushes I just don't and I showed them in the video I just don't have an area inside that I can work with it right now. The garage right now is occupied by a bunch of stuff that we got going on with the, what we're working on in the house. So the garage is kind of like that. Eh. And I've been working on the dining room a little bit and I ended up buying uh, eight cases, actually nine cases of the, uh, I don't know what the hell you would call it, the, the laminate wood planks, I guess they're called. And I was going to do the flooring on her, but there was a problem with the floor itself, and there was no way in hell I was going to go and <laughs> got the flooring. We have a four-foot level, put that on the floor, and the floor is all over the place as far as being leveled. It also is kind of spongy when you step on it. There, there's some spots in the floor where uh, you're not going to go through the floor, but it just kind of gives a little bit. And the way they built this house, this house was built in 78, I believe it was. We are the first owners of the house. So everything that's in here, a lot of it we did remodeling of. The kitchen has got a, um, a floor on top of a floor. Okay, that's why we were able to put the wood planks down on that floor without having any problems with being leveled. It was, we already leveled it, you know, a long time ago, many years ago. And it stayed, so that worked out pretty good. But the dining room always had carpeting on it. Same thing with the front room as well. It had the same carpeting throughout. So found out that the floor is all over the place in the dining room. So I ended up doing a level, uh, doing a level pour, and that worked out pretty good in the area that I poured it. But the problem was, is the whole floor is wavy. And I really didn't feel like going through all the BS to try to level that floor. And uh, it seemed like the it's arched. Okay, it's like like an arch top guitar. It's higher in the middle and kind of goes down on the sides. That's what this is. Now the only way to really fix it is probably put down a floor on top of that and level that off. And I'm not about to do that. So back to carpeting it goes. So I got the guy coming over. I uh, came over today, gave me the estimate, and it's, we're going with a quality padding and a quality carpeting, uh, and it's like a couple hundred dollars more than what it was costing me to do the layout, the laminate, or whatever the hell you call that stuff. So yeah, so that's out right now. So with this thing here, uh, what I'm gonna end up doing with it is once I get the silver down, there's areas of the silver I have to remove, and that'll have to be done by sanding to expose the black diamond metallic that is underneath it. And then after that, remove the masking, prep it for the candy red. So that'll give me, depending on how many coats I put of the candy red on this body, that's gonna give me the depth of what these flames, how they're gonna stick out. Like if I go with maybe three coats of the candy apple red that'll probably give me in the ballpark park that I'm looking for to have this silver pop but when you look at it on an angle it it won't be there so that's what I'm looking for that's what I want and then I got a bunch of the clear coat so yeah so hopefully I'm not going to be using I won't I shouldn't be using all this paint So right now, let's get uh, let's get cutting over here. Get rid of these strings. I'm sure these strings are probably original strings that came on this guitar. Nobody's done any fret cleaning on this thing. I could tell that tell that much on this thing. 
and it seems to be all original. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put the EMGs that I have on this thing. So this is going to be an active setup. And what I'm going to do with the pickup rings and the EMGs is I'm going to mount them to the body, lowering the pickups as low as I can get them to be flush with the pickup rings themselves. And I'm also going to mask and have them painted as well. That it's not going to be uh, epoxy resin, so it really shouldn't affect too much of how those pickups work. And let's get my cutters and get rid of these. So what I always do is I always cut somewhere around the 12th fret and hold on to the strings that are loose because I don't want them to be flopping around all over the place. And then the other pieces that are cut are short to where they're not going to touch. They're long enough to where they're not going to bother the headstock and they're short enough to where they're not going to bother the body. All right, that's it for those. Actually, what I want to do is I want to measure what size string that's on here. Oh, I can. Well, yeah, I can. Let's see the thicker one here. Get my glasses so I can see. So there's tens on this thing. I'm probably going to put locking tuners on here. Since I've been doing that with everything, just make it more stable. Now I've looked at the price range of this guitar and it goes, it jumps around a lot, all right? Depending on the finish that's on there, I guess. The highest I've seen somebody try to sell one of these for is like 400 bucks, and it was stock. There was nothing different about it, nothing new, nothing was changed, but it was in great shape. So that could be a reason why it's still sitting on eBay right now, or Reverb, I think it was. So these guys pulled off really easy. I gotta get myself a bag. I'm probably gonna reuse these. There's nothing wrong with them. Oh, and if you use a lot of the fine line tape, or would like to use a lot of the fine line tape for a project or something, bag it up, all right? Because the adhesive will dry out on these tapes, and now you're stuck with crap that you can't use. So bag them up and make sure the bag is sealed and store them someplace dry and not uh, uh, too hot. You know, room temperature is fine, or even too cold. I got about three more rolls of the one eighth, I believe, coming. So I'll have plenty of that to make mistakes with when I'm doing my doing my project here. Now, usually, I could turn this by hand. Yep, when they are old and haven't been messed with, and sure as shit, I can do it with that one. This is not going to get epoxy resin. All right, these guys are a little tighter, so there will be no epoxy resin on this thing at all. Nope, they're not stuck in there. I want to get out of doing some of the epoxies and get into uh, more of the paints now. I've done the epoxy thing, it's, it's kind of getting old, so let's get into something a little bit different. Get these little washers out. Let's see, can I pop these up by hand? Nope, oh, that's in there pretty good. How about this one? Nope, oh, that's in there pretty good. Get the back cover plate off. Now I've been bagging up and labeling all of the 
park bags that I have for every guitar that I've been working on. So if there is something that is missing, all I gotta do is refer back to that bag. Was there wax on this thing? Hmm. Somebody might have put wax on this thing. I can't pluck it up. This would move one of those little suction cups to work out good. There you go. Pretty basic. Nothing really too fancy inside here. No lock washers, huh? Just regular flat washers on the controls. Well, they left this body pretty thick as far as they just routed out where the controls are going to be. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem. But what I want to do, and now here is a wire that's not connected to anything. Hmm. And that goes to the ground of the switch. I wonder if there was a reason why they were getting rid of this guitar. So let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, and then we have the crowns. So the pickups are disconnected, all they are is just a two wire system. And then we got a ground for the bridge, which is a blue wire, black and white for the output jack. Alright, these I'm not really too concerned with. Get rid of this output jack. Nice, they actually drilled the hole on the side over here big enough for the output jack. You know, I've, I've messed around with so many guitars that a lot of times when I replace the output jack with a new or better output jack, that output jack is bigger in diameter than the hole that's cut for it. Now these pickup rings should fit should fit the other ones are okay should fit the EMGs with no problems. If not, I can always trim. Trim, and they use the same screws on both pickups. And I'm gonna have to fill these guys. Looks like they got double screwed here, where it didn't line up properly, or they drilled it and wasn't right, and they didn't fill them or nothing. They just left them there. And is this one the same way? No, this one did a better job. Okay, so I'll pop these guys out. So first I'm gonna try something here. And if this doesn't work, then I have to go with the second way of doing this. Wait, where is it? Where is my rubber sanding block? There you go. good and they shim this all right so let's see here they might have been too loose and they shimmed both of them only with one shim though they didn't put a bunch of them in there not a big deal it's ground now let's get this neck off of here Oh no, I'm using a power tool. A lot of guys cringe on using power tools on their guitars. Because of slipping.
the neck is off. Neck plate. And I'm going to keep that. I'm going to reuse it. And is there, nope, there is no shim whatsoever on the neck. Now this is what I hate about a lot of necks. There's a burr around the edge over here. And I don't like it. So the neck on this thing is in really good shape. It's supposed to be a flat. Makes it nice and soft. So I don't have to do anything with the back of this neck. There's no dents, nothing. It, it, tip is really good. I'm thinking about uh, matching the body with the candy on this as well, on the headstock. So let's see how that's going to be. <coughs> now to pop these guys up. And I have a little way of doing that as well. I use a jeweler screwdriver. And I will go from which side grabs first, the back or the front. Looks like the back is going to grab first. A lot of times they will just pop right out. These guys seem to be really, really tight. There you go. Yeah, those are real tight. They're also a lot better than some of the ones that I've seen. Because this has got like a knurl going around it. And it's also longer. A lot better than what I've normally seen. I need to get a longer screwdriver for this. Alright, I took that one out, now for this one. There you go, that's better. Oh, we got a stubborn one. Not no more. Eh, so I got some paint chipped out over here. Not a big deal. Like I said, this is all going to get redone anyway. So, uh, do this one here. Go from the other side now. I could leave these in, but. I'm not going to. at all. One popped out. Alright, got some stubborn ones here.
No, it's not even hitting one. So which one's got one in there? The third and the second. All right, let's see if I can pull those out. All right. All right, so they put some little rubber pads on the back of the cover to remove those. Pretty much flattened out. Last thing to remove. Try to keep these little rubber washers with the um, strap locks. So I don't know which is better, the rubber washer or the felt. I know that the kick guitars come with rubber washers. All right, so that's it. So this is ready basically for sanding. Strip out the neck a little bit now. I need a 10 millimeter wrench. Well, oh, these are all loose. Yeah, these are loose. Again, I don't really know if I'm going to redo this headstock or not. I gotta get a hold of. Jeff at Diamond Cut Graphics to have me make another one of his logos, but it's probably going to be one of his fancy colored vinyls that he has. Yeah, look at this. I don't even need a wrench to unscrew these. Not this one I do. It wasn't much though. Do, 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 do. Okay, I need a different jeweler screwdriver other than the ones I've got. These are smaller screws. And somebody once said that your tuner should be really tight in the holes on the headstock in order to get good sustain and whatnot. He also didn't put the screws on the back of the headstock uh, for his tuners on his little tele upgrade as far as the neck goes. So let's see. Just about every guitar that I've ever taken apart, put this tool away. Uh, every guitar that I've taken apart and took the headstock and the tuners off of it always did this. Where's the sustain? Hmm, interesting, huh? All right. There is a truss rod in there. I did find one. And let's see if it's a five or a four. I'll grab a four mil first. Oh, that moves nice. Really, really nice. So one of the things I want to do while I'm cut this apart. Ah, where's my neck holder? Let's see where we're at with the neck. Give it a bow in the center. Yep, that is working. Move that bow, and it looks like the nut's going to slide right out, too. So the 
two-way truss rod. All right, so we got a little bit of back bow. And she's flat right there, right? Damn straight. Bing. So what kind of nuts on here are plastic? Well, that'll be ch changed. How are these frets? Are they uneven? There's one right there. So there are a couple of frets that are uneven over here. I'm not even going to bother going down because I'm going to end up doing a, a level on this anyways. Level crown and polish. The frets on the ends are like really good exception of right down here. Usually it's kind of where they're a little bit shitty on every guitar. I don't know why. It's like they take the time to do all these, but they think that nobody's going to play the notes on the bottom part of the neck and they leave them sharp. Again, the inlay is has a little bit of gold going around. I'm not sure what the fretboard is made of. I don't think that is rosewood at all. It's kind of dirty. But again, you know, in really, really good shape. So the body is stripped. The neck is stripped. The next thing I'm going to do is do a level job. Get the, You want to get all of the um, the filing stuff that done first sanding and filing and stuff so like right now the way the neck is without any hardware on it without the new paint on it is a great time to start working on the fretboard and get the frets where you want them how you want them polished and everything else that way you know you don't have any metal shavings or or chips or whatever on nice paint that you just you know clear coat and shit because if you wipe it off like this you scratch the shit out of it. If you blow it off, sometimes the uh, pressure of the air will push it and it'll leave like a little mark, a little scratch. You may not even notice it without looking at it up close, but I'll know it's there. And again, with paper towel as, as well, never use paper towel on a uh, clear coat, any type of a clear coat, because it looks hazy, it gives it a hazy look. Think of this. We buy we buy the bounty paper towel, the good shit. And paper towel is got kind of the consistency. Now this is a three thousand grit sandpaper. It's got the consistency of about like a three thousand or four thousand grit sandpaper. So it does have a little bit of grit to it. It does have a little bit of uh, uh, potential to scratch a finish. I've been using the microfiber, and it don't have to be expensive microfiber. I get a bundle, they're like 12 per pack, and I think it's only like a few bucks, and uh, they work out really good. I mean, I don't have any problems with it. So some parts are going to be bagged in this bag here. I'm going to bag up other parts in this bag here. I'll probably put a roller bridge on here as well. Now the one thing, if you have a back plate, and it's in good shape. In order to keep it in good shape, it might be a good idea, so like this one here is not all scratched up, it's just kind of dirty. In order to keep it in good shape, you could separate bag it. Or just put some masking tape around it. It keeps all the other screws from damaging it, scratching it. And I bought a shitload of back plates for necks, but like I said, if they're in good shape, I'm not going to replace it. So that's going to protect that from getting all scratched up being in with the rest of the parts. I will be using probably this output jack plate. I don't think the output jack I'll be using because I think the uh, EMG setup has got an output jack. Alright, so that's that. That's that. I need one more for 
the pickups, even though I'm not going to use them, they're still good. There's nothing wrong with them. In fact, let's check out if they're still good. Or how good they are. So I'm going to put this on ohms. Right here is the bridge. Strip the wire a little bit. One of these days I'm going to pull a tooth out trying to strip wires. All right, now I don't like to touch both of the terminals. I want to put it up against it. So we got 1127 on the bridge. And this is the neck. No, sorry. This is the bridge. This is the neck. I think I said that already. I'm not sure. And we got an 824 on the neck. So the pickups are still good. There's nothing wrong with them. But again, I'm going to replace them anyways. So we have an F on the bridge. So that means what? Forward. And this one means rear because it's got an RI. So we got forward and rear. Hmm, who knows? All right. So like I said, I'm going to take the EMGs and the plates that go around the EMGs, the mounting plates, and I'm going to put them on the body when I get ready to paint. This way they will get painted as well. So that's it. I'm done for with stripping this thing. I can go ahead and put any loose tools away. Because all they're going to do is get in the way. And I can put this off to the side right now. I've got a deck nice and straight. Frets look pretty good. Going down the neck is not bad at all. It's pretty straight. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. No hump at the bottom. All the frets look pretty much even all the way down. The rocker showed very, very little uneven on some of these frets at the bottom of the neck, which is not a big deal. I could either leave it that way or I can do a level job on it. Or even maybe just tap on the high frets and they'll go down a little bit. There is no frets sticking up on the edges. And I can't even grab it with my fingernail to pull any of them up. Yeah. No light or anything coming through on the sides over here. All right. So the truss rod works, everything works, pickups are still good. I don't want to lose what it says back here with the serial number, I want to leave that on there. The scarf joint looks good, no cracking on either side of the neck, so this does not have to be replaced at all. This is All I got to do with this is fix these to where there's no more burr on top of the, uh, on the wood, because that can actually make a gap. The screws thread through the body, which I don't like. I like to have the screws, um, the screw holes for the neck just a tiny bit bigger than the actual screws, so they slide in. So when it pulls the neck in, uh, some of them have a, uh, an area where there's no threads that go through the body part of it. Some of them are threaded all the way up. And, when you pull, when you tighten them up and it pulls the neck to the body, sometimes these can make a gap. And if you don't have the neck pushed down on the body really good, and you go ahead and put your screws in, uh, you could have a gap throughout the whole thing. So this is really not touching or acting the way it's supposed to act when you tighten them down. So that's why I like to get rid of these birds, and then any birds that's on the neck pocket at all too, from when they drilled out the holes. So yeah, this is going to go off to the side. And this is going to be put on the mat right now. I've got my tools off to the side. Now this is an arch body. Alright, so the top is flat, but it kind of curves down and curves down here. So what I want to do is, well they do have a shim over here, but it is on the side of the 
good. So they have a shim over here that is pushing the neck to this side of the neck pocket. All right, so I'm going to leave that there. Actually, what I'm going to do with that to protect it from swelling and to protect it from uh, any type of damage. I gotta put the, this in a bottle now because the tip. Do I have any more tips for these bottles? No, I don't. No, that tip sucks. All right. So what I'm gonna do with this is give me one of my brushes. I don't use. I, I use a lot of CA glue, but I don't use a lot of CA glue. I mean, I use it kind of moderately. But the problem with the CA glue is, is every time I take the cap off of them, they kind of glue themselves together in time. <coughs> so I wish there was a way that I could end up doing this without that happening. So what I got going on here, I'm going to put a little bit of CA glue. There you go. A little bit of CA glue on this. And that shim... I want to coat it with CA glue. And what that's going to do is that's going to protect that shim from water. It's going to protect it from it swelling up with from water. It's going to protect it from falling off. Uh, if it's supposed to be there, then there's a reason why the shop put it there or the factory put it there. So now it's permanent. All right. I'm not going to hit it with any uh, activator or anything. I'm just going to let that air dry. These are. I got to get more of these. I have to get. Uh, I actually have to get the ones that you. It's got kind of like a turkey baster where you squeeze it and it sucks glue in and then you can pinpoint where you want to glue to be. But these are great. So that's not going to take long to dry because it's very, very thin. And that's going to protect that. So what I've got going on over here is I have a what? what I don't remember what sandpaper that is, so I'm not going to use it. Dig into my sandpaper stuff here, my stash. And with this, I want to use a uh, 600 grit split and let that soak in the water. All right, so I have the paper curling up in the water over here. I ended up taking some CA glue and the chips that are around the ferro holes. I ended up filling them up, filled up the holes where they ended up screwing up the drilling for the pickup ring and I hit this over here with some CA glue as well and then check to see if there was any other spots that needed CA glue and it seems like everything is alright so I have to wait for like these are dry but the ones that are deeper when you spray the activator on top of them it'll activate the top portion of it but it doesn't go to the bottom and these are drilled all the way in the length of the screw so I want those to kind of cure up really good before I start doing any sanding because all I'm going to do is end up breaking the top shell of these and probably spreading glue all over the place so right now I'm pretty much finished for today and uh, thanks for watching hopefully some of this information or whatever I've been doing over here has been helping you guys with your own builds and giving you little pointers few pointers to make life a little bit easier while doing them so you guys take care of a good one and i'll catch up with y'all later